Hello, guten Tag and welcome to another YouTube video. Building out camera rigs is probably one of my favorite hobbies ever. Is that weird? Anyway, so when I got my Komodo X, I was really excited of finding ways of rigging this camera out. Not only for bigger sets and cinema style shooting, but with the internal audio options, it could also be a really good camera for documentary work. So I wanted to find a really small, nice and clean build for handheld shooting with great ND filter solutions that are not proprietary or tied to any camera mount and a good onboard audio solution. So with this little versatile run and gun rig, I think I accomplished all of this after weeks of trial and error with different kind of accessories. And I will put links to all of the equipment that I use down in the description for you to check out. And now let's not waste any more time and let's start building out this camera. So without any further ado, let's start with the base. I have the Bright Tangerine cage on here and I really love the Bright Tangerine system. It consists of two side plates as well as a top plate. Both side plates are fully nader rail supported. They do have quarter inch mounting holes as well as three eight inch mounting holes. And they also have area locating pins. And this comes in really handy when you want to mount accessories to your camera. The Bright Tangerine top plate is also fully nader rail supported. It also has some mounting points, but it's also the one that delivers information through the pogo pins on top of the camera with an additional run stop port. So I could hook up a three pin fisher cable and enable run stop from different accessories or I could mount the red outrigger handle on top and I would still get all the information to power as well as run stop record with the outrigger handle. I also have a small rig rod clamp on here, which I won't need for this build, but it still stays on top of my camera whenever I need a full of focus. Again, for this build, I won't need it, but whenever I do, this is the one that I use. And there's another small rig cable holder in here, but I will talk about this later. On the bottom of the camera, I mounted the extended small rig DJI plate and the rig build comes with a DJI plate, which is pretty cool, but I opted for the longer extended ones because I like to run heavier setups and I need to move the camera further back and it also has a counterweight mount on the back, which the original doesn't. If you don't need to run all these heavy setups, then the original is totally fine. It's also a bit sturdier and of higher quality, but I chose to go for this one. When it comes to my lens mount adapters, I have a different variety. I use ones from Metabounds, especially the one from RF to EF, because it features a positive locking mechanism. And this is pretty cool, because the Komodo X already has a locking mechanism on the camera side, but now if I want to use EF lenses, I also have a locking mechanism on the lens side. And this makes everything really sturdy, and I really like them. But I also use the Canon Speed Booster, PL mounts, and just a regular RF mount sometimes. So let's get a lens on here. For my running gun documentary style shooting, I typically go with Cine zooms. I have the Tokina 11-20 as well as the Sigma 18-35 Cine, and those cover almost all my needs when using running gun work. But I also use different kind of prime lenses for whatever the project entails. At first you have to unlock it, and then you just take your lens and put it towards the markers. And that works just like a PL mount. And then you lock it in, and now it's pretty tight and secure. I also always like to run my setups with a top handle and the one that I chose for this build is also from Bright Tangerine. It also comes with a nader rail quick release plate. And what's cool about the top plate and I appreciate these little things is that it shows you the center. So if we want to attach it, we can make sure that it's dead center and it's not off to the side and our build is a little skewed and that really helps with my OCD. So we just line this up correctly and then we can just tighten this little lever and we're good to go. And the Bright Tangerine top handle is really sturdy. It's high quality. You can also move it back and front if you want to balance out your rig. Also features a lot of different mounting points and it feels really comfortable in your hand. To mount my monitor, I use a small rig monitor mount. On the top handle side, it comes with our relocating pins, so there is no wiggle whatsoever. And on a monitor side, it comes with a quarter inch screw. But I decided to add a Condor Blue quick release plate to the monitor mount as well as the monitor to get the monitor off quickly. Speaking of monitors, my monitor of choice is the brand new Port Keys BM72DS. And this features a 2200 nit bright 7 inch monitor panel, which is of really high quality. What I really like about this monitor though, 
is that it can control your Red Komodo and the new Red Komodo X wirelessly. So now via touchscreen on the monitor, you can change your ISO, aperture, shutter, as well as your frame rate. So you don't have to fiddle with the top screen unless you want to go into the project settings. It also features a lot of really cool ports, an SDI out port, two SDI in ports, and it even has split screen. I've never used that before, but if you're into that, go ahead. It also has HDMI in and out. It features a DC in locking barrel connector for power, also some Limo ports, as well as a motor control motor, if you want to use this to pull focus. Another thing I really like about this monitor are the hotkeys on top of the monitor. And I mapped my F1 to start and stop recording, which comes in really handy if you're shooting with a camera in your right hand, and then you can just press the record button with your left hand, because initially there's no record button on the left side of the camera. So overall, I really like this monitor and I can totally recommend it. And with my Condor Blue plate, it just slides on here and you lock it and then it just sits neatly in place. So now we need to power our camera as well as our monitor and potentially other accessories. And for this, I chose CG Cine V-mount batteries. And there are several kind of reasons why I chose CG Cine over other brands. One of the reasons I chose CG Cine is for its LCD screen on the back of the camera. And this one shows you an accurate percentage reading of how much power you still have left on your V-mount battery. A lot of the other competitors only have four LEDs that show you the power status. And once there's only one LED left, you don't know, do you still have 25% or 4%? So I definitely highly recommend having a V-mount battery that shows you percentages instead of just four LEDs. Another reason I chose these batteries is because of its ports. It has two DTAP ports, one on top and one on the side. Granted, the side port is being blocked by the antenna of the Komodo X when mounting the battery directly to your camera, but you still have access to the DTAP port on top of the battery. Additionally, you also have two PD USB-C ports, and this was also really important for me. There's one on top and one on the side. And not only can you charge your V-mount battery through the USB-C port, but both of the ports also deliver nine volts of battery power. A lot of the other USB-C ports only feature five volt output, and that is not enough to power a follow focus, for example, or other accessories. So having the ability to power accessories via nine volts instead of five comes in really handy. And last but not least, I really like the black and orange color scheme. So now let's place the battery on the back of our camera just like this, it clicks in really nicely. Like I said, you can really use the side port, but you still have access to both of the top ports and the one on the left side. I went for the 160 watt version instead of the 99 watt version for two reasons. Number one is the size and the weight, because it's way easier to balance with heavier cine lenses than with a smaller 99 watt battery. Reason number two is obvious, it's more power. And I try to not power my camera down unless I have to on set. So on a 10 to 12 hour shoot day, I can use four of these batteries, powering the camera, the monitor, other accessories, all day long. Usually I only need three, sometimes I only need two batteries. So the more power you have, the better. Now let's attach a side handle. And this I have been struggling with. And this is probably also the only piece on my camera rig that I'm not 100% sure with. And I tried all kinds of different side handles. And eventually I went for the Tilta wooden side handle. And this one is not bad. It works and it does everything that I need to. It's just not the most comfortable. And I chose the one with the NATO clamp on the side. So I have a quick release and I chose the one that has a bit more distance because there's also one that is really tight to your rig, but I didn't go for this one and I'll show you why later. So now we can take our side handle and we can attach it directly to the side of our camera rig. And I also have the original outrigger handle by Red, but I didn't really like it that much. I think it's not really comfortable either and it doesn't feature any quick release, obviously, because it's also having the run stop function. And overall, I think it's just too pricey for what it is. So there you have it. Now we have a side handle for our camera and that comes in really handy when shooting handheld. I can go with the top handle for low angle shots and I can go for the side handle for higher angle shots. And again, this works really well. It can also take the weight of the camera. And the reason I chose this was that it also has mounting points on top of the handle to mount a microphone. And I'll show you that later. 
So now let's get some cables in here. For powering the monitor, I use the original port keys DTAP to barrel connector. And I connect this to the DTAP out on top of our V-mount battery. And then I connect the other cable to the back of our port keys monitor. And the cool thing is that we can lock it down so that our connection is nice and secure. Now we need an SDI cable. And I found a company called Formcave and they make really high quality 12G custom SDI cables. And when I say custom, I mean custom because not only can you choose your color, you can also choose your connector if you want to have a right angled, left angled or a straight connector. And you can also choose the size. For another rig build, I needed a really small cable and Formcave got my bag. So if you want some high quality custom 12G SDI cables, I will put a link down in the description below. And if you use my code Damien Cooper, you can get a discount. So now let's connect one part to the monitor, just like so. And the other port goes into the camera, but we're not doing this right now because of the SDI protocol. So now here I added this little cable holder from Smallrig and via this ledge on the side, you can open it up and then you can neatly store away your cables and i use this to store away my sdi cable as well as my monitor power cable my media of choice is and always has been angelbird and i use this two terabyte av pro cf express type b card and this is the mark ii version that is also red approved and i've had no issues with this and you also have a lot of capacity if you shoot in lower compression rates now let's start talking about my ND filter solution because I have been looking for the perfect ND filter solution for a really long time. And I'm sure I finally found it. I decided to not use any drop-in filters via the adapter. And the main reason for this is that I use all kinds of different lenses. I use RF lenses, PL, EF, and sometimes I also want to use the Canon Speed Booster with the camera. And if I had a drop-in filter, then I would need a drop-in filter for each different system. And for the Speed Booster, there just isn't any. There's a lot of great options out there. The RED EVND module that only works with RED cameras, but that runs you $3,500 and it only works with PL lenses. Then Kipper Tie also has EF and PL mounts, but they also run you two to $2,500. And again, they only work with this one lens choice and this one camera. So that's why I went full matte box front filter solution. For this handheld running gun rig, I went with an ECC5 matte box. So let me walk you through what kind of filters I use. For running gun situations where I'm indoors or outdoors where there's not a lot of light, I use Nisi's C5 VND. And this is a true color one to five stop variable ND filter. And Nisi claims that it has around 97 to 98% color accuracy. And I've used this and I can say that it does have a really high color accuracy. The variable ND filter goes into the four x four stop that you can drop in vertically into your C5 matte box. So now if you want to add some diffusion filters like a one quarter strength or one eighth strength black mist filter, you have another four x five filter tray on the side. And here I also use Nisi's black mist filters and I've been using these for a lot of my shoots and I really, really like them. Great, now we have a one to five stop variable ND filter plus mist. But what if we need more ND, like a six to nine for example? Then we can replace our mist filter with a four stop infrared ND filter. And this one is also made by Nisi. And this way we can turn our one to five variable ND filter into a six to nine stop variable ND filter. And we also added infrared NDs. In my experience, if you're on the lower end of NDs between one and five stops, you're not dealing with direct sunlight. So infrared pollution isn't really an option. But as soon as you go higher, you should add an infrared ND filter to your system. Disclaimer, if you use a regular four stop ND filter with the Vario one to five stop ND filter, you still preserve the 97 to 98% color accuracy. If you add a infrared ND filter, you will probably get around 94 to 93% of ND filters according to Nisi. This is still really nice and accurate, but beware that you are losing a little bit of that color accuracy when you add an infrared ND filter to it. So now we have a six to nine stop variable ND filter with infrared NDs. But what if you want to have a six to nine variable ND filter with the option of a mist filter on top? Then we can get a four stop infrared ND that includes mist already. Unfortunately, Nisi doesn't make those, but Tiffin has one. 
So now you can just replace your four stop infrared ND filter with a four stop infrared ND filter plus let's say one eighth black mist. And then you have a 69 VND plus mist filters. Now, if you're going from the outside to the inside and you don't need any NDs at all, but you still want to have your diffusion filters, you can just pull out the variable ND filter, keep the black mist filter in there, and then you still have your black mist. I personally think that this is the most versatile solution when it comes to ND filters because it's not proprietary. You can use it on any kinds of lenses, stills lenses, as well as cine lenses, as long as the outer diameter of your lens is not larger than 95 millimeters. For all of my cine lenses, the Sigma cines, as well as the Tokina, it works and we can just clamp it on here directly. And for my smaller cine lenses or my stills lenses, there's adapter rings in the kits. So you can also use the matte box with smaller diameter lenses. If I wanted to go even higher quality, I could replace the variable ND filter with just solid infrared ND filters, but I will save this for my bigger cine rig video in the future. So now our camera rig has basically everything that I need for solo handheld shooting. And when I'm solo handheld shooting, I'm usually just barrel focusing on the lens itself and I don't add a follow focus to it because this way I have the better weight distribution because I can just hold the camera with my left hand while still being able to focus or even zoom the lens. And with my side handle or the top handle, I have added support. The only thing that is missing right now if I don't have a dedicated sound person is onboard audio. And with the Komodo X, we have that option as well. And here's the way that I do it. First, we get rid of our side handle again, and then I add the bright tangerine side plate to the right side of my camera. And this also features a NATO rail, so we can just attach it directly to our bright tangerine cage. On top of that side plate, I mounted the original red XLR adapter. And this one features two full-size XLR ports and is connected via a small cable directly to the red Komodo X. On the other hand, I added another NATO rail, this one is some small rig, to be able to still mount my side handle. So now we can just take this and add this to our camera rig. And it's not obstructing anything because there's just the exhaust fan underneath, but it still has a lot of breathing room. Now, additionally, we also add our side handle again to the NATO rail. And then we can take a microphone holder and I'm using one from my Canon C70, but I also have one from Small Rig that you can just attach via the cold shoe on top of our side handle. So let's do this right here, adding this to our camera rig, just adding this screw. And now we have a shotgun XLR microphone. The microphone that I'm using is the DayD Mic S2S, and this is a short condenser shotgun microphone, and I really love this for small handheld builds like this one. So now we attach one side to our XLR microphone, and the other one goes directly into the red XLR adapter. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to attach the XLR adapter directly to our audio port on our red Komodo X. So there you have it. This is my really clean handheld running gun shooting rig for the Red Komodo X. And most of this would translate to the original Komodo as well. Here we have a shotgun onboard XLR microphone. We have a spare XLR port if you wanted to add another lavalier mic, for example. We have a really versatile and high quality ND filter solution with our Nisi C5 matte box. We have a locking EF adapter that we can use to just tighten our cine lenses and a great monitor, which we can even control our camera with. So this is how I like to run my setup when I'm solo shooting, I'm barrel focusing and I capture audio directly into the camera. With this kind of setup, I usually don't run a follow focus or a wireless video feed. But if I wanted to add a wireless video feed to this rig and still have it really clean, I would use the DJI transmission system. And it also has this Tilta V-mount plate that we can use to not add any more cables. Let me show you how this works real quick, but I will go into more detail on my bigger cinema rig that I will upload in the future. So let's get rid of our V-mount battery and then replace our V-mount battery with the Tilta transmission device. And it just fits on the back of our camera without obstructing the antenna. But it's a really tight fit and it slightly bends the antenna out of the way 
just so you know. And now on the back of our transmission unit we can mount our V-mount battery. And now we also have access to all of our ports on the side as well as on the top. I hope you liked my rig tour and if you did then please leave it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe because I will rig out this camera even bigger for cinema style shooting on bigger sets. Speaking of bigger sets, I also have a couple of BTS as well as cinematography breakdowns where I use the Red Komodo X upcoming in the very near future. So I hope to see you on one of these videos. There you have it. I hope you liked my rig tour and if you did then please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more because I will rig out this camera even bigger for cinema style shooting on bigger sets. And speaking of bigger sets, I also have a lot of cool behind the scenes projects coming up as well as some cinematography and lighting breakdowns where I use the Komodo X. So make sure to subscribe and I hope to see you on the next one.